Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So some of you peeps may not know this, but I live in the first state to legalize the recreational use of the drug marijuana, and yes, I'm talking about the beautiful state of Colorado. Before marijuana, we were just known for the Colorado avalanche, snowboarding, and school shootings. Now, thanks to the legalization of marijuana, we've had so many potheads from California come out that Colorado has become more communist than San Francisco. So being that I am a Colorado resident and a hairline, Loss YouTuber, I think that puts me in a unique position to tackle the subject of cannabis use and hair loss. Does it have any effect on hair loss, be it positive or negative? Do stoners even have the energy to care about hair loss one way or the other, I wonder? Well, let's take a look at the research and we shall see. First of all, when dealing with marijuana, the terms used are very confusing. I mean, we hear about cannabis, marijuana, hemp, CBD, THC, and so on and so on. What's this all mean? Well, the technical name of the plant we are talking about is the cannabis plant, and it turns out both hemp and marijuana marijuana come from the same plant. The only difference between hemp and marijuana is the amount of tetrahydrocannabinol, or THC, in the plant. If the plant contains less than 0.3% THC, it is considered to be hemp. And if it has more than 0.3% THC, it is considered to be marijuana. The reason THC is important is that that is a psychoactive substance that makes you high and can get you some jail time in some states and countries. Usually marijuana contains a lot more THC than just 0.3%, though. In fact, it can contain up to about 30 30% THC. So hemp is basically marijuana without the THC. And hemp usually also contains a very strong fiber and therefore it has a lot of utility outside of just recreational drug use. Uh, for example, it can be used uh, for making a lot of materials, including clothing and even some plastics. So it's also a very uh, renewable resource and it's also popular with people who drive Toyota Priuses and Tesla drivers. And therefore you can find a lot of hemp-based products at Whole Foods in the uh, New Age medicine aisle. But none of these products contain more than 0.3% THC and therefore it's legal for them to be sold over the counter. So what about CBD, which you also being sold everywhere for its supposed health benefits? Well, CBD, what it is, is cannabidiol, and is found in both hemp and marijuana. In fact, CBD is the same whether it is derived from hemp or marijuana. However, federal law only allows CBD derived from hemp to be sold, meaning it has to contain less than 0.3% THC in order for it to be legal. CBD has no psychoactive effect, so it won't make you high. However, it is still being touted as a cure-all for just about anything, as you can see here, which I'm is just mostly new age bullshit stuff that appeals to vaccine denying yoga moms and you see CBD products in the quack medicine aisle of Whole Foods and just about everywhere right next to things like the collagen supplements and gluten-free organic grass-fed butter coffee and other such crap. Well as you might expect since CBD is the alleged cure-all for everything as a lot of CBD proponents will tell you it has been claimed to cure antrenic alopecia as well and it's mostly based on a study which we'll talk about in a bit and which I'll link below but as is sadly the case with a lot of studies when you tell Tell people what they want to hear, they're much more likely to believe it and not show any kind of skepticism. So let's go balls deep and trash this sacred plant while destroying any chance I'll ever have of being invited onto Joe Rogan's show. So the study is titled, quote, Hair Regrowth with Cannabidiol, CBD Rich Hemp Extract, a case series, unquote. It appeared this year in 2021 in the journal Cannabis, which I have never heard of, and it makes me wonder if Cheech and Chong are the editors. But anyways, the study is by a Gregory Smith and a John Santino, both based in Florida. I looked up these two guys, and Gregory Smith that you see here, he specializes in occupational medicine, and he operates a website that estimates medical costs, but it doesn't look like he actually practices medicine. As for John Santino, the article says he is from the, quote, laser hair center, unquote, in Clearwater, Florida, but his website is called dnahairregeneration.com, and his clinic appears to be actually called the Hair and Scalp Clinic. The site says that he got his primary training in Chinese acupuncture about way back in 1971, so it sounds pretty new agey, but get this, it also says he was the clinical coordinator for the original Propecia studies way back in 1991, which was which was very surprising to me. So I guess his practice is basically just a mix of both legitimate medicine as well as new age bullshit quackery, and you know, it makes me wonder if he sells organ supplements as well. But regardless though of his legitimate medical practices back in the day, it looks like at this point he's basically just pushing laser therapies and stem cell therapies on his website, so who knows what his agenda is. My guess is that he decided 
decided that promoting placebo products was more profitable than prescribing clinically proven treatments, but I won't let that get in the way of how I interpret his research. Anyways, to understand what CBD has to do with hair growth and hair loss, you have to understand a little bit about what's called the endocannabinoid system, known as the ECS in the human body. This ECS system is analogous to the opioid receptors in the brain that interact with the plant-based substances known as morphine and heroin, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. But the body also has its own natural opioids called endorphins that react with these receptors as well, and that's why those receptors are there in the first place. In the same way, our body also has receptors for cannabis substances like CBD and THC, but we also have naturally occurring cannabis-like substances in our body that interact with these receptors. The receptors we are talking about here are called the cannabinoid receptor 1 and 2, also known as CB1 and CB2. These receptors deal with things like injury and healing, so they tend to decrease inflammation as well as promote regenerative processes after injury. These receptors and a bunch of other related receptors are in the skin and even in the hair follicles as you can see here. Some basic research has shown that this ECS system is involved in controlling the hair follicle growth cycle, however stimulating these receptors aren't necessarily good for hair growth. You see, stimulating the CB1 receptor actually decreases hair growth, and another receptor called the vanilloid receptor 1, or TRPV1, induces the catagen phase, which causes hair follicle regression and apoptosis, which means cellular death. So, there are a bunch of receptors involved that are affected by both CBD and THC. Both CBD and THC stimulate the TRPV1 receptors, which you would think would be bad for hair growth. Additionally, though, THC also stimulates CB1, which also is bad for hair growth, while CBD actually actually inactivates the CB1 receptor, which theoretically could be good for hair growth. So the research is kind of sending us mixed signals here. I mean, is CBD good or is it bad for hair growth? Based on what we've seen, it seems to be both good and bad for hair growth, so how do we make sense of all of this? Well, we have a study of cultured human hair follicles which showed that low-dose CBD increased hair growth, while higher-dose CBD set off the catagen phase and worsened hair growth. So it looks like dose matters with CBD. So in that respect, it's kind of similar to things like wind pathway drugs, like SM04554, as well as KY19382, where using small doses is helpful, but higher doses are counterproductive, and I'll link the videos on that subject below if you're interested in that. But the reason why I wanted to bring up the Wnt Pathways role in hair growth is it turns out that I discovered, I discovered something very interesting in my research on CBD. So besides the effects of CBD on the ECS, there's also some very preliminary data that CBD may actually also affect the Wnt Pathway, which is the pathway that is inhibited by high levels of DHT in the hair follicles and mediate some of the effects of antrenic alopecia. So it is possible that CBD may act as sort of a natural wind pathway stimulator, albeit a lot more research is needed, particularly human research, before we can confirm that. So even though the effects of CBD and its role in promoting hair growth is complicated, it does seem that there is some potential that it may be useful, and I think it warrants further research. So like I said earlier, <laughs> CBD, as it comes from hemp, is available without a prescription. It doesn't cause any psychoactive effects, and that's because the THC content is too low. It has been proven to have some legitimate therapeutic effects, including the treatment of epilepsy, but also, unfortunately, has a huge fan base of hipster bro scientist idiots who bring up anecdotes claiming that it supposedly cures almost anything from cancer to erectile dysfunction, which, of course, I completely doubt. As a topical, it is poorly absorbed through the skin, but that's a good thing because it means it can reach the hair fall without too much systemic absorption, and more of the drug will go directly into the hair follicles where it may have some benefit. But I guess the real question is, what effect does it have on hair growth in vivo on actual human subjects? After all, this isn't the PFS Foundation or the Propecia Help Forms where you jump to conclusions based on mouse studies or people claiming anecdotally that using a saw palmetto shampoo somehow caused their genitalia to shrink. It's human trials that really matter more than anything. Well now, we've gone over some background research on CBD already, so let's go ahead and get to the Florida study. The two doctors who designed the study recruited subjects through a Facebook ad offering free hemp oil extract. They recruited 35 subjects. There were 28 males, 7 females, and they all had antrenic alopecia ranging from Norwood 3 to Norwood 4. The average age of the males was 43 and the average age of the females was 61. So kind of an older pi uh, patient population, uh, especially within the hair loss community where there's a lot of young people who suffer from hair loss, but this is still valid nevertheless. Each subject received a jar of hemp oil extract and applied it once a day to the area of the thin hair, but sadly the extract also included emo oil. Uh, I don't know why I included emo oil, but this is a problem for a couple of reasons. The first problem is that even though emu oil is completely worthless, 
there are still some people who are into new age medicinal woo who think emu oil has some therapeutic benefits including for hair loss even though there is no evidence for this whatsoever and the second problem is that the emu oil comes from the fat of an emu bird which you have to kill in order to extract the fat from which really makes this research unnecessarily cruel as they could have used any oil as a carrier so I'm sure the emu oil didn't affect the results but it does kind of muddy the waters and it makes the study unnecessarily unethical and it's not a huge deal but I thought it was worth mentioning nevertheless but let's go ahead and move on the study lasted for six months the subjects applied about three to four milligrams of CBD every day hair counts were measured in a one square centimeter area at the beginning and the end of the study by using a microscope the results for each subject are shown in this table there was a lot of variability but overall hair counts increased 93 percent the best results were seen in male subjects and in areas of vertex balding all subjects had some increase in hair counts though one third of the subjects reported some increased shedding in first in the first month which is typical of all hair loss treatments but there were no other adverse effects that were reported so this sounds like a pretty preem study, doesn't it? Well, sadly, there are some problems here. The most important and obvious problem is that there was no control group. We know that hair goes through cycles, and studies that do include a control group often show some hair regrowth even in the placebo arm of the study. We see studies like this without a control group to justify a lot of scam hair loss products, where they'll show a group of subjects getting results from broccoli or some other bullshit, but without any real control group, we can't be sure if their results weren't just due to natural changes in the hair growth cycle. Even people with androgenic alopecia will have periods of time where their hair growth is better than it is at other times, so you can't conclude anything without a control group. Also, the way they recruited the subjects was also pretty flawed. Think about the people responding to the Facebook ad for this study. Maybe some of them just went through a really bad shed, and then they decided they wanted to join the study because their hair loss seemed to be getting worse and worse. Throughout the course of the study, some of these people may have just gone through the worst of their shedding phase, and things just naturally stabilized because their hair transitioned into the antigen growth phase. People with antrenic alopecia still have hairs that go through the antigen growth phase. It's just that the growth phase is shortened due to the destructive force of DHT. It's not halted completely though, hence why like I said, you need a control group to rule out such a possibility. Now, I know a 93% increase in hair count seems impressive, but I'm pretty skeptical of these statistics. It seems a little too good to be true, and I think the study needs to be replicated with a larger sample size and definitely with a control group to confirm the validity of these results. Unless CBD really does work via the wind pathway, it seems like it is just affecting the growth cycle and as such is not addressing the underlying cause of androgenic alopecia, which of course is too much DHT on the scalp. Thus, I am skeptical, skeptical that even if it does have some short-term benefit, that it would actually help with androgenic alopecia over the long term the way something like finasteride does. Also, this CBD was in the form of hemp extract made out of ground-up cannabis plants. It had 11% CBD and 0.21% THC, but what is in the other 88% or so of the substance. The article mentions there are other substances in the cannabis like THCV and CBDV that block the CB1 receptor, and supposedly there were no significant amounts of these substances in the hemp extract. But who knows what other active ingredients there are in a cannabis plant? I mean, there's too much for us to narrow it down to just the CBD. Also, since cannabis plants vary so much in the amount of CBD, THC, and other cannabinoids, and also since we know that theoretically CBD might inhibit hair growth by interacting with the valinoid receptors, too much CBD might actually backfire on you and hurt your hair growth. So we haven't even established proper dosing guidelines for this substance yet. Using CBD at this point may be like Russian roulette for your hair based on the, on the existing data, and who knows how much CBD and other unknown stuff is in CBD oil that you buy over the counter. So I would be very careful before slapping CBD oil on your hair. At best, it might work as a weak growth stimulant, but it also might make things worse. And also, since we didn't have a control group in the study, chances are it doesn't do anything at all. But what about the good stuff, marijuana, which is the cannabis plant that does have high THC levels? Well, remember, THC stimulates the CB1 receptor, which inhibits hair growth. Well, if you spend time browsing hair loss forums, which I don't recommend, as 99% of it is people crying about how scared they are of finasteride, you will sometimes find a reference to a study from the University of Amsterdam that apparently is still unpublished. At least, I can't find it anyways. But the study was conducted on men and women between the ages of 18 and 60 who regularly smoke marijuana. 
They found that young male marijuana smokers seem to be prone to hair loss, but of course, young men are already the group who are most likely to have androgenic alopecia to begin with. So until the details of this study are published, I'm not really all that convinced. Though theoretically, at least, it sounds like THC could worsen hair loss, especially in light of all the research that's THC stimulates the CB1 receptor that inhibits hair growth. So that's bad news for all the potheads out there. Finally, one thing that isn't really linked to hair loss, but is worth mentioning anyways, is that cannabis compounds are taken up into the hair and and are detectable by analysis of the hair, and this has been proposed as a way to detect prior cannabis use, even in people whose blood tests for cannabis are negative. So even though cannabis is legal where I live, I know there are some countries where marijuana is very illegal and can result in long prison sentences, so if you live in a state or country where cannabis is illegal, don't let anyone get your hair. So overall, there isn't strong data that CBD and THC are good or bad for your hair. I mean, I know it's appealing to think there is some natural way to treat our hair loss, but the evidence is simply not there, at least not yet. And even in the best case scenario, it probably isn't all that great. Don't put your hair at risk with unproven natural remedies. Just stick to the standard clinically proven therapies. And if you are a marijuana user, whether it be for recreational or medicinal use, I'd probably try to cut down, if not eliminate entirely, due to the theoretical bad effect of THC on the hair. So who knows? Maybe we'll discover through further research that CBD will have a minor beneficial effect, but the dose and preparation might be critical, since at least in theory, CBD could also make your hair loss worse. So I think with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up, and I'll see you guys next time. And remember, kids, winners don't use drugs. Take care.